What's going on? I'm Liz from Learn Robotics, and welcome to this episode of Learn Robotics with Liz, the show where I talk all things robotics and tech from the perspective of an engineer and share my thoughts on what I think you can do to learn more about tech and ultimately learn robotics. Stay tuned. We have an awesome episode for you here today. If you're watching on YouTube, consider subscribing to my channel or subscribing to the show on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. Ready? Let's get to it. Welcome back to another episode of Learn Robotics with Liz. I'm Liz from Learn Robotics, and today we're going to be doing a very different type of podcast. This is going to be a question and answer centric episode where I read some questions that you guys submit across all of the Learn Robotics channels, including our YouTube channel, our Instagram, and any emails that you send in. If you do have any questions, feel free to check out either our YouTube or Instagram, or you can submit an audio question using the features on anchor.fm slash learn robotics. Choose the messages button and you can upload an audio recording, which I may feature you on an upcoming episode. Today's question is from Nat Onion on YouTube. So thank you, Nat Onion, for submitting this. I'm going to read the question and then I'm going to give you some commentary, my answers on what I would recommend moving forward. So the question is, Hi, Liz. Thanks for doing this. I'm starting as a grad student in a robotics program soon in the hopes of a career change. I like the coding side more, robotic software engineer, just because I'm very rusty on the electrical part and I love coding. Do you have any suggestions in this field? Also would like to know how working in the automation field is like, which is probably different than working on cutting edge robotics. Awesome. So there's two parts of this question. The first part is, do you have any suggestions in this field? referring to software development for robotics. I have a couple of quick thoughts on that. First things first, even if you are rusty on the electrical part and you love coding, people naturally gravitate towards the skills that they are the best at, and they try to avoid the things that they either don't like doing or they're not very good at. Unfortunately, with robotics, you have to know a lot about a lot And I would highly recommend brushing up your electronic skills because in software, you are going to be using the hardware. So the sensors, motors, controller, you're going to be using a lot of information from the external world to write your software. So you're going to need to know like how that's wired up. You're going to need to know how to read data sheets. You're going to need to know how to read architecture. Even if you're not the person managing the schematics or managing the diagrams, you still need to understand how things are connected and how they interact with each other so that you can write good software. If you're just writing software for the sake of writing software and you're not taking into consideration how data is coming in from your robot or the environment or these external factors, it's going to be very difficult to verify and validate your software when it comes to testing and working with other groups. Now, I'm not sure specifically what side of coding you're going to be working on because like with robotics, there are different subfields within robotics of different areas that you could work on. You could work on software, you could work on electronics, you could work on mechanics. There's also subsets within software. So you could be the one writing, you know, motor drivers. You could be writing an operating system. You could be writing, um, you know, a dashboard or an information system, or you could be working on the database. There's also verification and validation. So you could be writing unit tests for software that you didn't actually write. And so what I would consider doing is figuring out where your role is relative to everybody else, either within software or software within the greater scheme of the robots that you're working on. And make sure you just have some understanding of like who does what or where the information is stored. Because if you just write software for the sake of loving software, it may not work the way it's intended to work with the hardware devices that you are writing the software for. So I would just caution you on that. You don't have to become an electronics wizard. You just need to be aware of what you're writing the software for, how the data is coming in, how that integrates with other systems and other either libraries or other parts of your you know whole robotic or automation stack. And just be cognizant of what your software that you write, how that affects everybody else and how that affects the greater system. 
The second thing that I would recommend for robotic software engineers, if you're looking at more of like the research side of things, you're going to want to know Python, you're going to want to know C and C++, and you're going to want to graduate from those two languages into robot operating system, which a lot of like the sophisticated research oriented, um, I guess, projects use. And even some of the new startups are using robot operating system or ROS. So I'd highly recommend checking those languages and robot operating system, making sure you have some familiarity with that. The other thing you could do is even just check with either the company or the organization or whoever you're working for on whatever robots they're using. Make sure you understand the languages and the technologies that they work with. So if they are a ROS company, then you're going to need to know ROS. There's just no way around it. And so try to get some experience with the technologies that they are already using. The second question, I would also like to know how working in the automation field is like, which is probably different than working on cutting edge robotics. Yes, yeah, so when I first started in my career, I so I've, I've had a taste of all of it. So I started, I did my engineering degree. So we did a lot of more of like the research oriented robotics. This was still when Ross was relatively new and the, the libraries and the packages weren't really there yet. Um, but what I will say is going from that environment, working on more of like the cutting edge robotics where it's like research oriented, heavy data oriented, heavy software oriented, and then working in a factory um, for manufacturing and doing more of the industrial automation and those types of robots, it's kind of two different worlds at two different speeds. So you have... If you're working in research, you have what I consider like time on your side. So you're able to kind of look for new things and develop new technologies for the greater good of like robotics as a technology. Whereas like using robot operating system or ROS or cutting edge technologies for something like a startup where it's a novel product that you're introducing to market and you have the stresses of venture capitalism and new customers and new technology, you're on kind of a little bit faster timeline. It's like, we've got to get this thing to market. We've got to prove our concept. We've got to start getting customers because VCs want their money back, right? So you're on like a three to five year exit timeline. Whereas like in research, you may have a five to 10 year research grant or you have, you know, at least a five year, you know, PhD thesis kind of thing going on where you can kind of use that time and that funding to kind of gain knowledge for the greater good. And then at the very end of that timeline is like the industrial automation, manufacturing and robotics, which is the world that I lived in for, for a few years. And it's, it's fast paced. So like you're, you're basically, you're putting in solutions and fixes all day long because you have technology that is required to hit a certain amount of product per minute or per second. And if you have lines down or if you have operations down, then you're basically losing money like in real time. And so a lot of the technology and the fixes are not as maybe thought out as they would be in some of the other scenarios. Because when you're managing, you know, a factory, if your lines are down, you're not making money, you're not hitting your targets. Your goal as the automation engineer is to make sure the lines always stay up, they are optimized, and you're getting product out. So it's all based on throughput, it's based on efficiencies, and it's really based on long-term solutions in the downtime. So when the lines are shut off, that's kind of when you would do all of your updates and your upgrades. But it's really just you want to make sure that in automation or working in industrial robotics or, you know, the kind of that environment, it's a lot faster paced. You're trying to get a very particular uh, product manufactured. You're trying to get um, products moving. And it could just be a combination of using automation, conveyance, robotics to work with other people in the factory to get a certain product built, packaged and off the line, and then, you know, loaded onto the trucks and then out to whatever facility that ordered them. And so I've been in both high volume and low volume facilities. 
And it's really, it's, it's a total different mindset. You just don't, you feel like you just don't have any time to do anything. And a lot of the solutions that you come up with are like on the fly, get me through this afternoon kind of a solution so that when you're in downtime, you can actually go back, think about what a longer term solution or fix may be, and then just roll it out, implement it, test it and keep moving. So they're, they're two different environments. If you are interested in industrial automation, you're going to need to know PLCs. You're going to need to know industrial robot arms. You're less likely going to ever use Python or C, C++. You're less likely to use microcontrollers. You're going to need to know like structured text or ladder logic. It's a totally different world. So if you're coming, if you're coming into it thinking like, oh, I'm going to go and like do a master's program in robotics and then I'm going to go work in industrial automation, I would probably reconsider that thought because that trajectory just doesn't make sense. Now, if you're interested in industrial automation and robotics and conveyance and robot arms and working with system integrators, then I would almost recommend go to school, uh, maybe start with a trade program, maybe become an electrician or a mechanic, somebody that understands how to build things and like MacGyver solutions together on the fly. And then what I would do is maybe get an engineering degree, like a, a four-year degree, and then I would just work in a factory and let them cover like all my specialty training. But you are going to want to extensively know how to debug uh, wiring, understand schematics, understand how to use, you know, factory electricity, which is an interesting skill. You're going to want to know PLCs, HMIs, and robot arms. There's a lot of things that just aren't covered in a traditional roadmap for schooling if you want to get into factory automation, industrial automation. All right, guys, that's the show. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Learn Robotics with Liz. If you found it helpful, useful, if you've learned something, do me a favor and share this episode with a friend so that they can learn this information as well. And leave me a review on iTunes. Please give it five stars if you thought it was awesome. If you didn't think it was awesome, don't give it five stars. But I do appreciate you listening, and I'll see you next time on Learn Robotics with Liz.